How's that? Not bad? That's too bad, not too bad. Yeah. A, little, a little heavy. Yeah, man. You got all your gear. Two weight belts. Yeah. How are they going to make it? No one's falling yet. We're heading out to uh, Soup this morning. Got a whole crew meeting there. Gonna have a little bit of a family day, but I'm also diving, that's a, that's a guarantee. And then uh, Jasmine and I, we rented a hotel in Victoria. So we're gonna be staying a night in Vic, and then probably diving tomorrow, and doing a lot of exploring. Found a cool beach with a lot of glass, and I just wanna put in a solid day with the kids, looking around. Gonna be a fun couple days, a little staycation, and then uh, of course back to Nanaimo, and back to work for me on the mainland. But I'm gonna enjoy the time while I have it. Mom. We got here nice and safely to Souk. We got a good group today, a few families with us, but uh, Mark, we got Fred, we got Eric, and Neris. Gonna be hiking in here real soon, getting all geared up when we're at the spot, and jumping in, hoping for good viz, minimal current, sunshine's out, and maybe, uh, maybe no swell. I don't think we have any swell, because there's no wind. Awesome conditions, hopefully. Free diving is the ultimate package. Time outdoors, friends, hiking, harvesting, sightseeing, exercise, meditation, and relaxation. Some look at it as an extreme sport, which it can be if you want it to be, but the riskiest part for me is just trying to access the ocean. We're down at the spot, it is absolutely gorgeous here. It's hard to tell what the vis is like. It's choppy in that little corner and it looks a bit murky, but I expect it's gonna be a lot better once we're out there. It's crazy, we're looking at like, I don't know, 15, 20 boats out there salmon fishing. It's funny that we uh, can't take one. I know I've had that discussion, but anyways, uh, a bit of waves crashing in, nothing that we can't handle. The current usually picks up in this area, but we're a little bit sheltered from the, uh, I don't know, old crop of rocks there. Uh, so, looking around, no spear fishing, but I uh, should see some awesome sights. I know uh, octopus are in this area, so might look around for one of those. I've dove this spot twice already, making this time the third. The coastline here is massive, so there's no need to dive the same spot twice. Sometimes it's just nice to go back to some familiar territory. The visibility was some of the best I've seen in a while, but the water was some of the coldest I felt in a while. Algae typically dies off when the water temperature drops, so there's always a trade-off. Our marine creatures are adapted to cold water, so the rising of sea temperatures puts virtually all ecosystems in the Pacific Northwest at risk. Not sure how things will look? Well, here's a glance. Sunstar died off in the billions, leaving their populations critically endangered. The stress from warm water left them unable to cope with a starfish wasting disease. Sunstar prey on sea urchin and sea urchin eat kelp. Without sunstar around to keep urchin populations under control, precious kelp beds are turning into urchin barrens. Kelp is a critical habitat and food source for a countless amount of marine life, so when kelp beds disappear, so does the associated biodiversity. It would be nice if we could go out in the masses and turn some of these urchin into fish food, but thus far, the DFO doesn't seem interested in doing a call. Despite the reef being under attack, we still saw an impressive amount of life. Ling cod to my left and ling cod to my right. Both and all I saw on this dive for that matter were undersized. There were massive schools of little fish. I never really bring my spear gun out with me in this area. Not for rockfish or ling cod anyway, as I've never seen any worth harvesting. If you know me, harvesting is always secondary. I'd take these sites over a plate of food. The thought of all this disappearing is a scary one, and it's happening right below our eyes. Kelp is in decline all over the world, and British Columbia is not immune. There's not a whole lot we can do besides making lifestyle changes to collectively reduce our carbon footprint. It's easier said than done though. Driving for hours on end each week to various dive spots isn't doing the planet any favors. Hopefully the footage I capture can speak volumes and at least expose the environments that are so worth protecting. I hope my grandchildren are able to have experiences that are even better than my own. Hold on as it's about to get epic.
Before we called it a dive, we filled the bag up with some tasty treats. Every dive offers up a different experience, and this one led me right to this grunt sculpin. I've never seen one outside an aquarium, so I was pretty excited. You can't really free dive efficiently with a massive camera, so I'll never be able to capture footage like scuba divers do. But I'm still happy I was able to get this guy on camera. Yeah, it was an awesome dive. We saw a lot of life out there. Big schools of rockfish, both yellowtail and black rockfish. Saw two octopus. Actually, that's a lie. I saw one. Fred saw one. And to top it off, saw grunt sculpin. First time I've ever seen one of those really neat and peculiar looking fish. Uh, I've always been keeping my eye out for one, and today uh, finally came to be. Uh, so grunt sculpin checked off the list. If you guys watch uh, Waterman Siren, Jeremy Siren, my buddy, he said looking for fish is like looking for Pokemon. And honestly, it's so true. Uh, they're all funny looking creatures. And uh, every time you see one, check it off the list. Gotta spot them all. We'll get some sea cucumber. We're gonna clean them up and uh, maybe cook them out of Eric's sprinter van. He brought a barbecue with him. Gonna see how the family are doing too, the wife and kids. Beautiful day, so I'm sure they're having a blast. Many believe octopus are too majestic to harvest and sea cucumber are too repulsive. Makes you wonder, is it only the moderately good looking marine life that should be considered? I do my best to spread out and not harvest too much of any one species and put my own bias aside. If it tastes good and is sustainable, that's a win for me. Today on the cooking show, we get a little bit of uh, coconut oil to the sea cucumber. Uh, garlic and chili powder. Yeah. I grabbed the ground onion out of the van by mistake. You had one job, Chris. One job. Oh well, the ground onion and chili pepper still tasted awesome. Fred walked the beach and grabbed some gooseneck barnacles and limpets too. Limpet and sea cucumber juice. Yeah, we tried uh, cooking some of the husk. It was really salty, but and we didn't really prepare it properly, but better than I thought it would be. It's uh, really good. <laughs> it's almost like pasta, everybody's saying. Though we could have stayed at the beach forever, it was time to leave. We had dinner at Taco Fino in Victoria and spent the evening walking around the city and waterfront. See the fish you see? Where? are right there, see? Go swimming around. A cruise ship had just pulled into port and we blended ourselves in with all the travelers from abroad who were here to explore our beautiful province. The kids did super well, but it was a long day and we could sense a change in attitudes. So we rushed it back to the hotel to call it a much deserved night. <laughs> the next day was a stunner, but Jasmine asked me to stay dry and I complied. We went to the beach and put in a few solid hours beach combing. We walked away with our largest haul to date. Blue, white, green, purple, awesome little pieces of sea candy. If you enjoyed the video, show your appreciation with the thumbs up and quick comment. Thanks everybody, peace and love.